How could we demand more? How can we demand more? Well behaved women never make history. Last year, 2016, we had 783 armed robberies. I think the leaders today um, are more interested in what they can get for themselves. And you think that the national D average would be enough? It should be enough, but it isn't. How do you get the people in power to change what they're doing? I don't think we can. I think we need to change the people in power. I think we need to change the people in power. I think we need to change the people in power. That's, that's the problem. Hi, and welcome to another exciting episode of Let's Make the Difference. Today we're definitely going to be making the difference with... I, 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 I got to make, make sure I don't say seal because I, I, I've already been attacked already for the night. So, who here? Who here? Um, I'm Anthony Kyle Williams. I mean, where are you from? Uh, well, who are you representing? UB. UB. That's what, that's what I just wanted you to say UB because all day I was saying COB and my daughter was jumping down my throat and everybody else was jumping down my throat. So I got to remember it's not COB, it's UB. And my co host, Zet Senator Francis from the I Am Woman Show, she's in the dog house today. She was late. Say, so introduce yourself. That's why you're in the dog corner today. I'm never in the dog corner. I'm a female. Hello, everybody. I'm Zeth, Senator Francis, host of the I Am Woman Show, and I'm here all the way from Grand Bahama. Y'all give her a round of applause. She flew in just for this. Her jet was late. That's why she reached late. <laughs> Who we have on the show today? Um, Anthony Carl Williams. My name is Eudasia Taylor. Hi, I'm Malia Ajigal. And? I'm Farah Johnson. Farah Johnson. And we have as our executive panel, I'm, I'm going to let her tell you who she is. Go ahead. My name is Elspeth Jackson, a.k.a. L. Jackson. You may know me from the Island Pulse television show. I'm also a visual artist. I went to COB and not UB <laughs> <laughs> a long time ago. And um, I consider myself to be an activist um, and a person that loves this country a whole lot. That's me, L. Excellent, excellent, excellent. And we have a vibrant audience. As a matter of fact, y'all give yourself a round of applause. <laughs> Today we're going to be talking about my concerns for the state of my nation and the way forward. Anybody want to jump on that right away? My concerns for my nation, the state of my nation and the way forward. I wouldn't mind jumping on it. We have some um, persons in Grand Bahama who would like to state, you know, they, they gave me some of their concerns before I got here. And one in particular, her name is Natasha Pelicanos. Her concern is with the increased closing of hotels and resorts in Grand Bahama. The concern is when are the former employees are, or current employees, because they're still employed, going to get paid? And in the future, when we have new investors for resorts, how, what kind of um, policy are they going to put in place to make sure that when investors back out, that this issue doesn't arise again, that persons wouldn't be having a hard time when the owners step out and they don't get paid? Also, I forgot to introduce um, Mr. Kendall <laughs> Lewis. Mr. Kendall Lewis is here. He's saying don't do it. But Mr. Kendall Lewis, you are part of the executive panel as well. Let the behaving people know who you are and what you're all about. Is he in the doggos as well? He in the doggos as well. <laughs> he come late. But, but when he walk in the door, he sold you out. He's like, she's the reason. She's the reason. He sold you out. I did. I did. Good evening, everyone. My name is Kendall Lewis. I am, to put it frankly, I'm an incoming MP for the Yamacraw constituency. I'm running in this election under the party BNCP, Bahamas National Coalition Party. I also do training and development. I do mentoring and counseling with at-risk youths and rehabilitation from those from the prison. Excellent. We will address, as a matter of fact, by everybody coming in late. I, 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 I put everybody on blast. My good friend, Shavado, Shavado, um, what's your last name? Shavado Gibson. Shavado Gibson. Shavado Gibson just walk in. Um, he's going to be taking some pictures. Um, um, Shavado Gibson, we're talking about my concerns for the state of my nation and the way forward. 
you you weighing in or you just taking the pictures come back to you eh? <laughs> all right all right all right okay let's start it out with you 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 young ones well for starters i'd like to think will i actually have anything for me in the future like <laughs> no go ahead don't be shy it's exactly what's on your mind that's what we're doing here well i feel as if today so many people of the older older generation is taking and taking and taking for themselves but what are they leaving us with when i go off to college or if i get a degree at the university of the bahamas what jobs do i have to go to or what is there for me basically is my concern yeah you wanna answer that you wanna um well to be honest i i have the same concern um i have a lot of ideas when it comes to um the future and what this country can do for the youth. One of the things um, I think that we should look at is definitely some type of program or some type of a system where there is an industry. Pick, choose, whatever it is. We have so many resources here in the Bahamas, okay? Um, every child that is born, every Bahamian child should be entitled to a share in that industry so that by the time that child becomes 18, they have a college fund they are able to either go into a business if they'd like to or buy a home whatever direction they want their life to go in they would have that backing and I think that is something that is attainable I don't think it's so ridiculous how do you guys feel about it I love it <laughs> and so that she's saying that she is concerned that there may not be anything left for her she is concerned about the way the country is going um, would anybody here want to elaborate on stuff that has you concerned? Um, well, she has a valid point. I mean, okay, personally speaking, my name is Alea. I am 18. I'm going to school in New York. Um, my area of study and my, my career would be focused on genetic engineering and stem cell research. Um, I know, upon hearing that, I know you're thinking like, wow, there's literally <laughs> nothing for me to do here. And it's true. I mean, there's something in Freeport. There's Ocanio's Advanced Stem Cell Institute. I've been there. They actually invited me to take a tour. And um, I'd love to work there. But in terms of genetic engineering, it's not what I would want to do. And I feel like here we, had, we, we would possibly, well, we could possibly have a good industry in that biomedical engineering or biotechnology type of field. But I, I guess the, the drive isn't there, which is so weird because so many of my peers are actually going into it so what do you think about that that's a sensitive topic for me and you guys should be worried and should be concerned because I graduated in 2000 as a respiratory therapist when I went to college I was the second respiratory therapist in the Bahamas and I decided even after having a job offer away in Florida I decided to come home because I thought I would be making a difference you know, and I'd be impacting our country in a particular way. But can I tell you, I never got a job. Today's show is brought to you by Hair Dimensions Beauty Supply Center, located Coral Road and Hudson Estates. Telephone 351-1082. Expressions Clothing and Accessories, located next to the Sewing Center. Telephone 352-6596. Jive International Services. Book now and reserve your cruise with only $100 deposit. Telephone 351-5244-45. The Cabinet Restaurant and Bar. Happy Hour Specials from 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Specializing in native dishes. Off Coral Road next to your dimensions. Telephone 441-7733. Super Club's Breezes. Marvin H. Dames. Free National Movement Candidate for the Mount Moriah Constituency. Empower. Impact. Improve. Prayer for every occasion by Patrice Davis Road. Telephone 456-9617 or 601-0048. Chelly Moss, DNA candidate for Centerville. Let's fix Centerville. And Smith Sweet Shop, serving sweets for every occasion, specializing in cakes for birthdays, weddings, and special events. Order your hard cost buns now at telephone 803-4984. I never got a job as a respiratory therapist and I downgraded because of my love for the medical, medical field and I became an EMT. I never got a job as an EMT because they told me my brother worked as a, in the ambulance department. 
So I understand your concern and it's those are very valid points and you should be concerned. And that's why I pr applaud Utah and this, you know, let's make the difference is about to hit the world and hit the, the Bahamas, you know, so they're going to know firsthand these are our concerns and have the opportunity and the time to hopefully fix these concerns and issues. Okay, um, and sorry about that. I, I think I definitely did something totally wrong. I didn't allow um, the students to fully introduce themselves and perhaps say what they were studying and and so forth. So let's 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 start let's start with you because I know I noticed you wanted to make a comment. You had something to say, so you can introduce yourself and then we'll come back to your comment. Um, my name is Anthony Carr Williams. Like I stated earlier, um, I'm a psychology major at UB, and um, I plan to get my bachelor's degree at the UV and continue my studies further on. Okay, and Ms. Taylor Rule. Okay, my name is Udeja Taylor Roll. I'm currently at the University of the Bahamas. However, I'm not studying what I want to do. That also is something I want to bring up. UV really should expand the majors that they allow us to take. But what I really want to do is I want to be a film producer and I want to go off to study film. Hi, my name is Alea Ajiga, like I mentioned before. Um, I'm not studying as yet. I took a leap year or a gap year. I'm pursuing my own business and gourmet catering company. And um, my major will be uh, biochemistry and biophysics. I plan on getting PhDs in both and then pursuing a, a career in genetic engineering. Hello, my name is Farah Johnson. I am a media journalism student at the University of the Bahamas and I plan to enhance my studies abroad and to come back and enhance our media field. Excellent, excellent. And uh, now um, you said, Anthony? Anthony, you, you started to make a comment. Um, yes, um, what they stated earlier, I, I agree with. Um, I think there are many talented young Bahamians that are not getting the opportunities that they should be getting. And I feel as though some of the blame has to go to the leaders of our nation because they haven't been able to uh, make the resources possible for us to um, expand on our diverse, uh, our diverse ideas. Like I know many young Bahamians who want to go into fields that have absolutely no, there's absolutely no resources for them to um, do what they want to do. And I think they get discouraged and then they have to settle um, by staying here or they have to go elsewhere and try to find jobs elsewhere and they have a hard time making it through and I think that in the future we have to work on that. So why do you think our leaders are, let's, let's, let's just put it this way, why do they choose to be backward or stagnant? Why, why, why is this? I think over the course of our history the leaders were focus on themselves. Um, I think the leaders today um, are more interested in what they can get for themselves. But that's just my opinion. I know that's very, that's controversial. But I feel as though, I mean, just by, I, I haven't seen any effort out there by our leaders to make sure the Bahamian people are well off. Um, in terms of economics, I understand the Bahama is coming um, and stuff like that, but we are too old-fashioned and traditional in terms of how we want to make our economy stable. Like, if we want to make our economy stable, let's just, big, let's just build a big hotel. We already have a hotel, Atlantis, <laughs> but let's just build another one, Bahama, and that's going to settle the job issue. We have to be more creative in terms of um, making jobs and making our economy more stable uh, like for example renewable energy because we have plenty sun and plenty we have plenty resources that we could do and start our own um economics yeah um that's just my opinion Farrah. um okay so initial initially there was an allusion to brain drains and that's basically um expert bahamians um going abroad to study a field and coming back and finding that their degree has no use here and i think another major problem that that stems to is nepotism throughout all of the work fields and as he said when he talks about the leaders i feel like it's a symbiotic relationship between the government and the people whereas the bahamas has a system in place 
and this system has been established for years now and we are just repeating it so it's an ongoing cycle and we're getting nowhere so I think that it's important to embrace change which has been hard as we can see for Bahamians at large but as time moves on we should be able to evolve and to I don't know um, embrace it so that you can invite young ideas in the old can mentor the young and bring them up and then we can see some change some progress Alea, before you go but should we really be disgruntled over nepotism um I do believe so if I have a daughter or a brother or a cousin and they're qualified for the job and I am in charge of that area shouldn't I look out for my family well, first? nepotism implies that there are qualified applicants all around and you choose the person who's familiar with you or mm -hmm. who you're friends but, with but, but I'm saying what if my friends or my family or is, is qualified you're qualified you know, it's just my daughter and she's mm -hmm. qualified for a job and you're qualified for the job and I'm in charge I'm gonna give it to you Deja um, okay. That is the mindset. No, okay, let me let me clear this up. That is the mindset of our leaders today. Mm -hmm. That is not the mindset of Utah. <laughs> but I, what I want to know, right, is is it is it really wrong? Um, well, there's always an exception, and I believe that if the person is qualified and the most qualified for the for the position, that they should get it. But um, I can speak or attest from personal experience that there are people in the workplace that are unequipped for the job, that are not prepared, that are inefficient and they have the job and the system goes slow because of the job that they have and they can't do it effectively and because of that there's a trickle down um, effect on everything and the whole process is a big mess. So Mr. Kendall Lewis, you said you're going to be the next member of parliament for Yamacraw. How can we fix this? Or how would you fix this if by some chance you became the next member of parliament for Yamacraw? Not if. <laughs> Let's let's correct that right there. Not if. Not if. When. When. Thank you very much. And I'm happy to have this panel of young, vibrant minds that you, you would hear change, change, change is what they're calling for. Being someone who's young also, you would have persons who would step down on you or put giants in the front of you and tell you that you can't accomplish something that yet you're sending me to a place to educate me but then you want to stump my creativity you want to stump my ability because it doesn't fit your mold mm -hmm. so i understand what they're going through if we could build education around why build education the system always have to be fitted for the child why the child can fit the system let me do what i have to do let me bring my special gifting to the country that every one of us have to be in a mold. I have to look like you, I have to sound like you, I have to talk like you. You know what it is because you like, you like volume. Should we all be monotone in a sense? In the way we study, in the way we live, or in the way we learn or teach? I can see um um Z Senator Francis on L L y'all y'all wanna weigh in. Okay, okay, yo go ahead. I I totally agree with you on that point. And this is what I wanna um touch back um on what you guys were talking earlier. Okay, let's just say for example, she does have the degree. I don't have the degree, but I have the years of experience and I am currently unemployed. She is your daughter with that degree but what i have to offer from prior skills and experience should she still be awarded the job well as time progress they say go and get the education you got to educate yourself if you don't educate yourself someone else is going to come behind you who's educated and they're going to get that job at the same time i think there should be a system of apprenticeship in the country there are a lot of um uh there are a lot of older people uh, trapped basically I use trapped loosely trapped in the system uh, where they're taking a job or they're keeping the job because they can't provide for themselves otherwise so I will humor them there but um, as a young person it enrages me that there's no space for us a lot of people like to talk about the youth are our future and oh my god we need to protect the youth and oh my god youth 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 but when we actually get up to speak there's like they lie in. you're you're they like so young they, they I've had I mean, you guys know me, Utah and uh, Udaysia, they know me personally. They know, now, let me be real. I have a big <laughs> mouth. I'm very opinionated, um, you, you know, so 
I speak my mind. And when I do, or I put input, or I say something, whether I say it rudely or I say it, say it eloquently, it doesn't matter because my opinion or what I say is shot down. Um, but in terms of like the job field, I think that people should have an apprenticeship system. I mean, she should get the job, but she should be able to mentor her in that job so she can perform well and Excellent. she can better the country. Excellent. L. Really and truly, though, I, I believe that our leaders should be thinking with the mindset of who is the, the very best person for the job. At the end of the day, we need to do what is best for the majority. And I think that should be the focus for too long. Um, we haven't demanded from our leaders accountability. And that, that's straight across the board from the oldest person to the youngest person. You young people need to put these people to the fire and yeah. challenge them. Okay? Because the truth is that the youth are the future. I think that deserves a round of applause. Uh -huh. What we want to do next, um, um, we want to talk to the audience. Um, you can tell me if you have concerns um, for the state of the nation and the way forward. Anybody in the audience have any concerns? Well, my concern is I feel like as a country we're growing and grooming children to be police officers, defense force officers, waitresses and waiters. I, I feel that somehow, I guess I may be a part of that generation that we're speaking so loosely about, that not allowing these children to imagine, grow to be more, want more. I, if you talk with young people and you say, what do you want to be? Police officer, waiter, hotel, let, let's dream bigger. Let's as parents, let's focus our youth in terms of wanting and needing more because like you said you're you're trapped in this little mediocre box let's encourage them to come out of that box this change team we understand and see your struggles we will fix it we will fix it through education and training yes we will fix it through empowerment programs yes we will fix it through better health care Yes. We will fix it through effective crime control programs. Yes. We will fix it through enhanced local government. Yes. FNMs. FNMs. Your change team will fix it. I feel as if we don't try to break the system because this is how we were socialized. I feel as if the institutions that we're going to, they're not going to tell you, oh, go against us. Like they're, they're socializing us in a way to say, hey, you listen to the rules. You don't break those rules. You don't question my authority. Mm -hmm. I feel as because of this, we're sort of trapped in this box. So it's like we won't, the institutions won't tell us to do something different because they don't want us to rebel against them because that's when the war is going to begin. Agreed. And I, I, I have one more thing to say though. Well behaved women never make history. That's Hello. all I want to say. I Hallelujah. That's that Are you real? Listen, well, it ain't going to be nice. I feel it's it. not going to be cute. It's going to be revolutionary. Mm -hmm. Okay? You got to get ready for the ugly because if you think about every major movement in history, it's not always pretty. No. Nope. Okay. And Ed is on our best behavior tonight. I can't you, I'm not trying to hold it down, y'all know. <laughs> but, uh, but we got we you, you wanted to say something? Mm. Uh, okay. Sure. Um, my name is Abashai Adelaide, and I'm a history education major at UB. And I feel as if the government isn't investing enough in all levels of education, tertiary, and especially secondary and primary, because that's, that is the period where young minds are formed and that is a place where you can reverse certain issues and correct certain practices where they're not getting it at home. And as a person who knows this history, and I see how, where black people came from and the challenges that we face, I feel as if it's my personal duty to do whatever I can to correct certain issues. So I just really hope that government would place more emphasis on education. How future. could we demand more? How can we demand more? How can we make them do it? You do what you do. You do what every major historical movement has done. You go in a group 
and you protest, you demand, you well, and you get ugly. You get ugly. You well, really do. Well, this is do. what let's make the in difference. a legal way. This is what let's make <laughs> the <laughs> difference you. is all Bye. about. That's why we're having this forum. We are going to make the difference here in the Bahamas. And uh, my friend, go ahead. Um, I think it's they're talking about reform and protest and there people have been protesting for years there have been schools where the teachers stop coming they stop teaching they try to get the government to recognize them to notice them and you'd think that the national D average would be enough it should be enough but it isn't how do you get the people in power to change what they're doing I don't think we can I think we need to change the people in power that's that's the problem <laughs> <laughs> the the wow 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 okay really? moving moving on we got to move on we got to move on I want to cover something else um we're talking about concerns any of you in here have a concern about the alarming rate crime is going or crime is Yes, I do. I, this, is, this is what I was thinking about tonight. Crime is a huge issue, and I think it's because I've read, sorry, I've read some documents from the 70s, the 80s, and people were talking about the increase of crime from back then. They were talking about how crime has been increasing. So we know that this has been a problem for decades, and we have refused to make any changes. We have refused to improve education so that young minds can learn a better way than just breaking into houses, selling drugs. We refuse to fix the real issues. And I, another thing I think is a problem is that we have a lot of repeat offenders. So we need to we need to work on... So there's no reformation? Um, nobody's being agreed. reformed? Yes. I, I yes. was... Um, oh, sorry. Where do you... Go ahead. Okay. Well, um, I was in Youth in Parliament and the actual topic of one of our uh, things, one of the things we were having an intelligent discourse about was juvenile justice, which is making people or uh, kids and teens um, in jail, giving them the resources and talking about ways we can help them and put them out into society and make them productive members. And the thing that was repeated amongst everyone in Parliament was that we should have resources in jail. I have personally been there. Kudos to Kings of Academy for taking me there and actually allowing me to see the conditions that they live in. And it's it's literally the worst, like it's so disgusting. Like can you imagine being in a, a dark, dingy, nasty cell? You don't have a bed, you have, there's cardboard. I've seen cardboard, I haven't seen mattresses many times. I've seen cardboard and I've seen them draped in towels and it's dark, they have one fan in the corner of the room and they get no light. They just, they're stimulated by nothing. I want all of you to know that you can count on me. Lean on me. Our future can't wait. We will shine. Bahamas, we have a problem. And it goes by the name of the Progressive Liberal Party. Fire them. Throw them up. Rise up. Rise up. Rise up, West Grand Bahamian Bimini. Grand Bahamians and all Bahamians. I stand before you and the time is now that we fire back in a most powerful way and that is to vote them out. I believe we can do it. We can make it happen. Walk and leave. Good fire. Walk and leave. Okay, I believe that crime is a social problem and as long, statistics do prove that as long as there's poverty, as long as there's overcrowding, there will be gangs and there will be crime. The majority of the crime in the Bahamas, especially with the young boys, is gang related and the gangs, you see them recruiting young because the people are desperate, the people are lost, the people have no editor, no guidance, no parents, no tutelage or, and no education. Without education, ignorance is bliss. So I think that's where the problem starts. Like like he was saying education we need to know our history we need to be educated we need to be informed to stop these things so when there are positive factors or protective factors and somebody says hey join the gang you know the ramifications of being in a gang if you don't die today you die tomorrow and your family can go down with you mm -hmm. and I guarantee you if we fix the social problem and we get the young idle people off the street with potential that we wouldn't even have a problem with a lot of people in the jails for the jails to be that okay. bad of a condition. Yudesha and Anthony, um, what, what level of fear do you have toward this escalating crime? 
Um, myself personally, I don't really have that much fear, um, and I'll I'll explain why. Um, because what I see in crime today is mostly young men retaliating um, in rival gangs or whatever. Now, now hold on. See, a lot of people seems to get this a bit mixed up. We ain't just talking about murder. Last year, 2016, we had 783 armed robberies. Someone held a gun to my head. 783 armed robberies.